Good morning, everyone. Uh, here in beautiful snowy. If you can't see, like this is my <laughs> this is a window. How bright and snowy it is outside this morning. Like happy April. <laughs> it is snowing like crazy um, this morning. It's it's so pretty. I guess if it's going to be cold, I'd rather it be snowy. Um, how are you guys where you're at this morning? Um, how are you faring and lockdown and amidst all the chaos? So I hope you're all well and healthy and, and doing good. Hey, Ashley and Chris and Yorkie girl. Um, got a lot of questions. So I think everybody while they're in lockdown is literally just coming up with as many questions as they can for me. It's crazy. Um, so I am going to hammer at some of these. Good morning, everyone. And I am going to kind of go with it. Oh, I'll, and I'll also, so guys, my merchandise that you guys have been asking for is up on karenworthy.com under merchandise. Um, so there's mugs. There are six different style mugs. Some of them say out of stock because I'm getting, uh, three of them come hopefully tomorrow um, in an order. So three of them I'm still getting in the mail, but lots of coffee mugs there um, for your picking. I did a few uh, trucker hats <laughs> just because I thought they were fun. Um, so we'll see what people think. I don't know, guys. I'm, you know, in, in quarantine, you come up with crazy stuff. Um, so the trucker hats are kind of fun, but it's what you guys, you know, it's what I always say. And so you guys always quote me back. So I love it. Um, perfect. All right. So this first question is from Randall. Um, for the sealed coffins that use a gasket with the off gassing that takes place during decomposition, what happens to the pressure buildup on interior? So if the pressure is building up, it doesn't always happen, but that's, you know, the extreme is the exploding casket um, that can happen where the casket will, uh, will breach in an area. It doesn't like kapoor, the whole thing explode, but you can get quite a boom um, moment probably with the casket. A lot of times this is not seen. Most of the time this is not seen. It's either underground or in a mausoleum. And so what you get is the after effect of stuff running out or, or whatnot, or maybe the ground caving in if they weren't using vaults. Um, so it doesn't always happen. You'd always have this huge gas buildup, but it can happen. Is there a way to minimize pressure buildup? And there's not, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Embalming and treating the cavity the best that you can so that bacteria is minimized is the best way um, because that's where your pressure builds up. When a body does decompose, how does that chemical reaction react to the materials used in the coffin, whether it is wood or metal? Um, it's not so much chemical as it is just moisture. Um, you know, you, moisture and metal, you can get rusting and pitting in the metal. Um, moisture and wood, you're going to get a deterioration and warping and, you know, breaking down of the wood material. So it definitely is going to be affected by the moisture that our bodies put off during decomposition. Hey, everyone. Um, Yorkie Girl's asking about extreme embalming. So I get asked this question a lot um, because there's so many people want to know about it and it's a very tight lipped process, the people that do do it. Um, in my opinion, I think it would be, I mean, it would be kind of fun to dream up some of these scenarios and to do. However, liability wise, I feel like you're putting yourself out there. The more you manipulate a body, the more you place it in certain positions, you're risking, you know, them falling out of that position. You're risking them purging in that position. So I am guessing there's a lot of wires, rods, poles, duct tape and PVC, who knows what's going on to keep that person in place, whether they have done a special process to dry them a little more. I'm not sure. Um, but they also have to be flexible. So 
when we embalm, um, you know, we want to make that body a little more rigid and make sure the tissue is all preserved. However, to keep them pliable to put in those positions, maybe they don't use as much fluid. I, I really don't know, guys. Um, I've tried to get some answers. I haven't been able to yet. Um, so it's one thing I would love to get answers for you, but people that do it, it's a very specialized thing. It does not happen very often. It's not all over the place um, happening. So, you know, we'll try and get answers, but it's kind of hard. So Judy, um, at this time, my merchandise can be shipped to the UK, but it's super expensive. So like to send one mug is 25 American dollars just for the shipping. I don't think, you know, you can tell me if you think that's worth it and you can message me privately if you want to pay that much, but it was quite substantial. Um, so I'm working on trying to get the cost down a little bit for shipping, but international shipping is just expensive. Um, so as of right now, I have it just U.S. sales, um, unfortunately, to try and get the shipping figured out a little more. I am not a merchandiser, so I am just playing around. You guys asked for merchandise. So um, I've come up with some and tried to keep the cost, you know, reasonable and shipping is the one way that um, is hard to, you know, I only have so much control over shipping prices. So um, how are funeral homes handling pallbearers since we're supposed to stay six feet apart? Well, right now, a lot of places you can only have five people at the funeral. So you don't have enough to have even all the pallbearers if they're allowing people at all. Um, so you just, you know, you do the job and then, you know, space yourself back out or the staff from the cemetery will do the carrying or, um, whatnot. So there's a lot of different situations that are happening. Patty, Ann, I'm so sorry. Your friend's son was just found dead. That's so, so sad. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm not missing any questions here. Um, do you think at this age, I'm too old to completely change my career? Girl, I'm 41. So don't be calling us old. <laughs> um, no, this is a great second career for people. This is a very, very common thing that people transition over to the funeral business or vice versa. A lot of times out of a medical field or something service um, caregiving oriented into the funeral business. Um, so it's not at all off the wall. You would be surprised at more choice school, how many um, that, you know, they would be called non-traditional in a usual college, but when you have 20 people and, you know, four or five of them even sometimes are older than 30, then it's not as non-traditional, you know, it doesn't really get that term. So it's kind of the norm. All right, some more questions here from Joseph. My great grandmother had a stroke in 1974 with paralysis in her left arm and was completely closed at the elbow. Her closed hand rested on her chest. She was in this condition for 12 years before she died. When we viewed her in the casket, she was beautiful. And I was grateful for that. When I realized both arms were extended with one hand on top of the other, the lower abdomen, I was a bit shocked. How was the embalmer able to do that? Um, the arm may have released on its own. The tendons may have loosened up. Um, worst case scenario is they kind of, they did break her arms or her arm, or they cut the tendons to release. Um, things like that do happen, but you need to get the permission from the family because sometimes people want the person laid out straight. I don't know why, um, if they've been that way for that many years, just let them be that way. Um, so I can't tell you how they did it or what the situation was without being there um, or whether something, you know, naughty happened or not. Um, do funeral homes use volunteers? Um, you can, but why work for free? That's my question. Why would you work for free? Um, my grandmother died a few years ago at 95. She was in a hospice house and many of us were there when she died and the next morning. 
Her nose wasn't large. It was a typical size. At her viewing, her nose looked like Michael Jackson's nose. I presume the sheet hadn't been pulled up a bit over her nose. Would the embalmer have rebuilt her nose? It was so small. Um, so... I don't know what the sheet up over her nose part means. Um, and, you know, when people die and their tissue maybe relaxes more, the nose is one of the biggest areas you're going to see weight loss, change in shape of the face, um, because sometimes, you know, as you're laying, those cheeks come up more and then they'll relax down more and then it pulls off your nose. So your nose shape may change from that, um, I can add to a nose, but I can't take away from a nose. Like I can't make a nose smaller during embalming unless they had like edema where there was swelling from tissue or from fluid, but I can't make it smaller any other way. So I can't, I wouldn't, I don't think anything happened there aside from just tissue settling and, you know, gravity, so to, so to speak. I live in Colorado. What mortuary college would be a good choice? I'm looking to change careers after being a paramedic. Um, well, Colorado, you don't need to be licensed to do anything, um, embalm or, or be a funeral director or anything. So if you want to, you can just switch over. You don't have to go to school in Colorado. Um, otherwise, there's lots of schools across the country. Um, I don't like to try and point people to one over the other. Uh, you can do online. You can do in seats. So it really depends on if you want to go to a school or if you'd rather um, just do it online while you're still working your other job. So there's a lot of options. I found a white feather just randomly. I believe these are signs from our deceased. You know, I think that sometimes we do see signs and we see things around us that can be connected to people we loved and people that died. Um, so if it means something to you, go with it. Like, it may not mean anything to anybody else, but if it means something and if it comforts you, like just let it. Um, it's nice to feel comforted by finding and seeing things. Um, so a half couch casket. Um, a casket either has a full solid lid that opens all the way, and that's called a full couch. Half couch is what is traditional in my area where the bottom portion of the casket is closed and the top portion is open. So it's cut in half and it's not exactly in half. It's kind of a 45, 55 um, if you're looking at the casket. It's not exactly in the middle always. Um, so that is what a half couch casket is. AJW in St. Louis. We were just looking at some St. Louis stuff the other day for our trip to St. Louis whenever we get unlocked and get to try and travel down there. So um, very excited. My daughters, so we just watched Cake Boss, uh, Next Great Baker on Hulu or something. My daughters love baking shows. And so we watched the season. It was like from 2014, but that's it's the only one on there. And they think it's the greatest thing ever. And the girl that won it is in St. Louis and she has a bakery there. So my girls are so tickle pink that when we go to St. Louis, they can go to her bakery and get a cake made by Leah from Next Great Baker. So they think that's the best thing in the world. So um, we we look for all the silver linings right now during all of this chaos. Um, we only have full couch caskets down in Ohio in your area. Yeah, it's really weird because I never even knew a full couch existed. I think until I maybe went to school or or not like there's not even they're not even in our catalogs where I had worked growing up and um, so it was never anything yes Mac I will meet you in St. Louis it's it's a date so um, I accidentally came across one of your videos on YouTube I love I always love people are like how did I get here like why did I why did I land on this channel um, your video when you went to England, when a grave lease has expired, I believe you said that if the lease was not renewed, the cemetery could remove the top remains and reuse it by placing another body in that grave. So no, um, what they do, it's a double, a lot of them are double depth. 
So the first person that dies would be placed in the bottom. If the top was supposed to be meant for your spouse, then it would be for your spouse. Unless the lease was not renewed by your family, they would then remove the marker and they would then use that top space for another family or person and they would get to put a headstone on the place. So, I mean, it's, it's not an eternal forever, you know, piece of ground that they can lease forever to put people um, or to different families. You know, you've got one chance with the bottom one and then a second chance with the top and then the leasing is done, but it can last for years and years and years because they go in 25 year increments. So, uh, you know, there's different ways that they do their leasing. Um, if I leave instructions to say, to let's say be cremated, that request can be changed by my wife or any other person. Is that just in Michigan or other states? So each state has their own rules. Michigan has a very distinct next of kin order. In Michigan, you cannot sign for your own cremation ahead of time. So I cannot say I want to be cremated, sign my authorization, and then when the time comes, they have to cremate me. In Michigan, the deceased does not get to say what they want done to them. Their family has to carry out what the person wanted done, or the family can do what they want to do. Um, you can designate somebody. So if I think my husband is not going to follow my rules, I can call my friend Karen and say, will you be my designee? And we'll fill out the paperwork, put it on file with the funeral home, and she will be the person that gets to dictate what happens with me when I die. That has become in place about four years ago or so um, in Michigan. Some states you can sign for your own cremation ahead. Some states, you know, you can um, do, all, you know, there's all different things that you can do. Um, but some states you do not have the say in what you want done with your body because you're not here to say what you want done. So there are, you know, I know it doesn't sound fair, um, but it's just the situation, the things that's in place. Of course, Ashley, you can ask a question. She was stillborn. The funeral home denied open casket. Any thoughts on why they may have denied that? Well, Jennifer, some people are not comfortable about, you know, presentation of stillborns um, or infants um, because they're just not comfortable with it. When it comes to a stillborn, how far along were you with, with your baby when you had her, him, I'm, um, she, on, on when you had her? That'll give me a little more information. I'll watch for you to put down how old she was. Um, make a video on green burial last year, but no video yet. When? Um, I've done videos and talked about green burial. So there is no fully functioning, full on green burial cemetery anywhere near me. Um, so when I travel to somewhere, when there is there one there, I'll be doing a video on it, hopefully down to Texas to visit the modern mortician and we'll do videos about it. I have one that her and I are chatting about green burial coming out soon. So an embalmed body to decompose can happen within a week. There is no time limit. So take that out of your heads. There is no time limit. Embalming does not mean that that person is forever preserved. The body is going to do what it wants to do. We can try and delay with the embalming and that's our plan. And so, you know, the embalming is not a forever answer. Do you think funeral directors view online degree as worse than an on-campus? No, Ryan, not really. You're not going to get some of the connection with other people, kind of the long-term connections that you would get being in C class. Um, I don't think anybody views it as different. Well, there might be people that view it differently. It's about your skill and it's about you and it's how you present yourself. You're definitely going in with not as much hands-on as you would have in seat. Um, so that if you were up against somebody who is in seat, who have has all the same background as you, they may 
weight a little more towards them because of that. But it all depends on your experience and how you present yourself, honestly, um, in my, you know, in my vision. So 38 weeks. Okay, Jennifer. So your baby was pretty large at that point, almost full term. And then they did an autopsy. Um, there's, there's no reason that you shouldn't have seen your baby. That makes me really sad. Um, Regularly normal pregnancy autopsy, no explanation for her passing. So they would have just needed to embalm and presented her. Even if you didn't have it open for everybody, there's no reason you shouldn't have been able to view her and hold her and see her. There's, there's honestly no reason. Um, but some people are not versed at caring for stillborns, caring for infants um, as well. Uh, it's just a crappy side of it that everyone's not trained in all the areas, embalming and such. And, you know, some funeral directors won't allow people to even hold the babies uh, in the funeral home. And I'll bring in a rocking chair <laughs> for the moms, you know, to sit and rock their child. Like that's a natural response. When you see a baby, you want to hold it and you want to rock it and you want to be near it. You know, that's your child or your grandchild or whatnot. So I'm sorry you were not allowed that um, that moment with her. So there should not have been a reason for that. Oh, yes. St. Louis. Like, I'm going to have way more to do in St. Louis than I think I'm ever going to know. Um, if you order multiple mugs, is the shipping different? So I will try and see if I can get two safely in one box. Otherwise, I'll have to box them separate. So I will try if with like on shipping and stuff, if I find I can consolidate and the shipping is less, I will definitely do a refund to you for some of that. I've done that one time um, when I was first figuring out if I could fit the hats in with the mugs and such. Um, so that first person that ordered a mug and a hat, I reconfigured the shipping costs right away quickly. So um my only son was six weeks old when he passed away. He had an autopsy in the funeral home. Said he had to be put in a plastic bag. I wanted viewing. I was denied. I Like, these are so upsetting to me. There's absolutely no reason you couldn't have had a, view, a viewing and had a service. Um, you just put a hat on the child because they will have an incision on their head. You sew up the chest just like you would an adult. I don't understand. Um, that's really heartbreaking. And I'm really sorry um, for you guys that you were not able to, to have those moments um, at all. That's just, it's the worst thing. Um, I'm going to put a link for the mug. Somebody just asked if there's a link. I got to find where my keyboard, I set it down here next to me. So, oh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm a little, I'm a little blown away by that. Um, that's really sad. Do I need to contact a lawyer for an advanced directive or is that something I can do on my own? Um, there is forms online and stuff, but you need to make sure it's legally binding and everything. So I always think it's good to contact a lawyer, go through, especially if you have children, go through, get all your stuff in order. Um, as soon as I was pregnant and to the point, like, I think I was four months pregnant with my first child. I said, okay, this kid, this child might be able to live, might. As soon as that happened, my husband and I went to an attorney and got everything in place because if we died, I wanted to make sure everything was in place for the child or whoever would be raising the child. So if you're parents and you do not have a will in place, do it. This is one thing I feel so strongly on. I have seen it too, go too, too far south because parents die together in like a car accident or something, and then you have these children. Well, the family, you think, if you go ahead and ask somebody and say, oh, well, what happens if you guys die? Oh, well, our parents will decide who gets the kids. It doesn't happen. The court decides who gets your children. Your grandparents don't get to decide. Imagine you have 
four sets of grandparents because your parents are all divorced. So you have four sets of grandparents now fighting over these children who just need parents at that point. They don't need grandparents raising them and then losing these grandparents, you know, however many years later and having two losses, they need parents. So go to an attorney, get things in place so that your kids have somebody in place that will be their guardians and their parents down the road and the ones that raise them because you don't, you like, nobody gets to just pick after you die in this horrific accident or whatever it is with your spouse who gets your kids. The court does. So be proactive and get that stuff in place, guys. I've seen it. I've seen the fighting. I've seen the battle. It's ugly. It's not good. Adding grief to all of that. And it just gets ugly. So get things in place. Choose for your kids who would raise them and put it down. Get it all in place. Um. Uh, that breaks my heart at 24 weeks. I lost my daughter and the funeral home was so nice. They actually paid for the casket and they have a spot for babies in the cemetery. Yeah, actually that's what I run into quite a bit is that, um, a lot of people do no charges or, um, you know, things like that in, so a lot of really good happens, but obviously there is some bad, um, what is happening with the coronavirus bodies? I see the refrigerator trucks. Are they releasing the bodies to the funeral homes? So this next week, guys, I've got a bunch of interviews lined up with funeral directors across the country um, to try and put together some front line with funeral director videos because there is so much erroneous information being put out about all of this. It's it's a lot of so Caitlin did a great video on this. I think she posted it yesterday. You know, like don't be scared by the media. They're trying to stir an emotion. With you, just because there's a refrigerator truck doesn't mean it's a bad, you know, don't don't correlate it like all of a sudden we're now using all these big lifts and throwing people in refrigerator trucks and we're running out of room. A lot of the hospitals have tons of space in them. There are definitely a lot more deaths. New York City has the largest population of people in one place is the whole country. So there's definitely going to be more deaths there. A statistic from like 2017 or 18 was there's a death every 9.1 minutes in New York City. That was before the coronavirus came. So there's definitely more deaths. Burying people in parks is not happening. Heart Island is a cemetery previously. That's where all the homeless, indigent, that's where, where they were all buried previously. There's just more being buried there now. So that's not like a new thing. So don't let, you know, the media like scare tactic you like investigate and find your own information and stuff. Refrigerator chucks because the process is delayed of releasing. Hospitals only have a limited amount of space in them. So like our local hospital has maybe like four cooler spaces, like four. So if you have six deaths in a day, there's not, you know, if until they can be released properly and stuff, we can't get everybody in cold storage. So imagine if you have more deaths happening in a day um, because you're in a larger city and you also have people that are unclaimed. So say a homeless person's brought in, they end up dying of COVID or whatever they die of, it doesn't matter. They could have had a heart attack and they're at the hospital. They have to go into cold storage until they can try to find the family. So you have the people that had to be held for however many days anyway while they're looking for the family. Plus you have a you know higher death rate right now. So that's why you have to have refrigerator trucks is because the space is so limited and you have people being held for so much longer. So it's not that there's thousands of people dying at one time. It's that the process has changed so much as well. Um, So you've got all these things that add up to kind of a crappy situation right now. So I've got a couple of funeral directors from New York. I'm um, hoping to interview this week and talk a little more about what they're experiencing frontline. So there's a frontline medically and there's a huge frontline funeral side of things. And I want that to be heard. Question, question, what do they do? Oh, that's it. 
I was a little confused about paying in advance for my funeral. What is the best way to pay in advance? So it depends on your age. When you meet with the people at the funeral home, they're going to tell you if a trust or if an insurance policy is going to be better for you. You know, when you pay it in full, you lock in the price of the service and the merchandise. So um, that's always good to do, especially if you're younger. Prices of funerals right now, historically, have doubled every 15 years. So 15 years from now, the price of a funeral will have doubled. Um, So if you lock it in now, live 15 years, saved a lot of money. And so when you meet with the people, they'll give you your different options and let you know which way is best for you in your age and your health to be able to do. Do you do burials in other states? I'm only licensed in Michigan, so I can only legally um, function in Michigan within the funeral business, but I can work like along with a licensed person in another state if they give me the professional courtesy of it. Ooh, I'm going to fly through these. Someone asked me last week too, I'm trying to think if it was in our live video or if it was an email. Someone asked me if um, there's ever been like problems with a green burial, like a natural burial and animals digging them up Um, because they are buried at about three feet, I believe, deep, um, which is kind of what they found is the best for regeneration back into the earth and decomposition, everything. So I have never heard of such a thing. So I reached out to Melissa, the modern mortician and asked her, and she said, absolutely not. In all of history, there is no story or evidence of a living creature desecrating a grave. I get this question often. It's like, this was the way we were buried before the civil war. It's not happening. So Melissa kind of has disputed those you know, some of what would happen. A few more minutes here. I've got questions. I'm going to do a coffee on Friday as well, just because I had so many questions this week and just to connect with you guys again this week. Um, Are you running out of PPE? Yes. There's a lot of funeral directors who are kind of scampering here and there when people run out of things. There's a lot like Facebook chat groups and things for embalmers and funeral directors. And people are like, Hey, I need this. Where are you guys finding it? Hey, I need this. Where are you guys finding it? And, you know, helping connect each other to more choice supply companies that might have things like body bags. And uh, like, it seems like there would be a huge abundance, but there's not. And they're being used more aggressively by everyone. So we are definitely, trying to find things, um, chemicals, embalming chemicals, the sanitation chemicals or sanitizer chemicals that we're using, definitely having to not scrounge, but definitely look in different places for a lot of this stuff. So funeral homes have not been advised to not embalm COVID cases. The World Health Organization has said, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't embalm. But CDC has said it is fine. The World Health Organization talks about the manipulation of the body. You don't want to move the body around more than you need to. You don't want to do this and that. If we treat and sanitize the body properly, it's not an issue. You know, when people are going to do removals and bring the bodies into their care at the funeral homes, They're sanitizing the nose and the throat and the mouth, blocking that air expellent that's bringing out the virus um, and treating the body while wearing PPE. So as long as we take the precautions, we're finding that we are being safe. Um, And so all we can do is the best with the best information that we have. World Health Organization where are they getting their information? We don't know, um, but we know that the CDC is giving us good, strong, clean information. It is what it is. Um, we don't know. Um, I'll do two more quick questions, guys. Hey, Sherry Spicer. Um, Uh, Ryan, because they're buried right now, they're, they're being buried with the people. 
Ryan, and you would have to do so much cleaning and sanitizing. They're not an easy thing to clean and wipe out. It's, it's more laborsome than you would need, but the bodies are sometimes being double bagged, which means they, you know, one pouch inside of the other to try to contain. And so um, there's just, we're running out. Um, Samantha's asking, when my aunt passed last year, her neck was swollen from steroids. Wasn't there a way that they could have fixed that for the viewing? Well, it depends on if it was fluid filled or if just she had, you know, expanded and gained that much weight. Um, because the thing is with steroids, you typically are just gaining overall weight. Um, we can't take weight away. We, you can, you know, take out the edema if it's from edema. Um, and so it, even sometimes if a person is, you know, thicker through their neck, we can wrap the neck with a towel or a sheet and leave it that way overnight. And it will bring down some of the, the swelling if it's swollen, but if it's just a person, it's heaviness and their weight, we can't change that. It is how they are. And it's going to look even more so when they're laying in a casket because up and down, um, you know, you have gravity and things can hang 360, if this makes sense. Um, kind of all the way around. But when you lay a person down, your viewing plane is changed and all of that is kind of moved out into the side and flatter. So this area is going to look much larger on somebody if they have a double chin, if they have jowls, if they have any weight going on around the neck, it's going to look much bigger, um, you know, the size of this area when they're laying down. So that's one of the biggest complaints we get is if somebody's of a certain size, when the family comes in for viewing, they say, well, they look huge. Why can't you change that? I can't change who that person was or how they looked. We can do the best we can, but it does, the person does look heavier when they're in a casket, um, unfortunately. So there's a few tricks we can try and use positioning, you know, lifting the head, a little bit more than the chest. So it's not all kind of one plane um, can alleviate a little of that, but there's only so much we can do. Thanks, JW. See you Friday. Um, one more question. What time do I start Friday? Brenda, I'm thinking maybe three-ish or so on Friday. It might funk, it might bop around as I'm getting these interviews scheduled in, um, my time and my days are filling a little bit. So no liposuction. I know that's why a lot of people say that the aspiration looks kind of like a liposuction machine, um, kind of the same premise, but no, it doesn't work that way. When my dad passed, my mom, stepmom was taking pictures. I found it weird. People do take pictures, um, quite a bit. Actually, uh, even more so now with you know, social media and stuff, people are taking pictures and posting them, you know, like, oh, grandma, oh, dad, you know, it's more, I don't know, I don't get that part of it and making it a social media thing. Maybe it's just gain support attention. I don't know. Um, and then some people do for just, I think, historic, or maybe if a family member is not able to be there, they take some pictures so that they can show them to them down the road. So one last question, does embalming stiffen the body? Um, most of the time, yes. So you're firming the tissue to preserve it. And sometimes the body will get way more firm than other times. Uh, it just depends on the chemicals used, the way the body reacts to the chemicals and, and such. So thanks guys so much. I'm going to log off. I hate keeping these too long because I like them just to be a nice little viewable time slot. Um, right now though, we're all stuck at home. So we want to kind of, you know, connect with others for a little bit longer even. So watch for some new videos this week. I'll do another coffee chat on Friday. I think next week I'm going to wrangle my husband into doing a live video with me. What do you guys think? Want to ask him some questions? Uh, if you want to hear from him, post some questions in the comments below as well. Uh, so yeah, we can know what you want to know from 
the husband of a funeral director. So um, also I'll post the link quick again for um, some merchandise. If you want to get um, a mug or a hat or something, check those out. Uh, and then check back uh, after tomorrow. There'll be more available then. I really love the campfire style one that uh, it's like teal. I'm so excited for that to come. It should be here tomorrow. So really excited about that stuff. Thanks so much, guys. And have a good week. Be safe. Stay healthy. Talk to you later. Bye.